Hi there viewers. Since Redneck is at work, I'm here playing his video games. He's recently been talking my ears off about how much he loves NBA Jam that it's even got me a bit interested, and I'm not what you'd call a sports dog. Unless Redneck turns it on, I don't really watch sports. Why watch it when I can play it? Here's my short review for NBA Jam. I'm playing one of the console versions instead of the original arcade NBA Jam simply because Redneck hasn't set up an arcade emulator yet. Anyway, after the moderate success of the arcade game Arch Rivals, which by the way wasn't allowed to use real team or player names, Midway was able to procure a license deal with the NBA. This meant that NBA Jam would not only have real teams, but real players too. Including? but not limited to Michael Jordan and Dennis Rodman. It may not be such a big deal by today's standards, but back in the early 90s, having real players and teams was a rather new concept for sports games. That being said, NBA Jam was kind of a trendsetter for basketball titles much like how Tecmo Super Bowl was for football. Gamers today probably wouldn't have NBA 2K or NBA Live had it not have been for NBA Jam. In saying that however, it should be known that this game is not realistic. For one, the matches between teams are 2 on 2 instead of the usual 5 on 5. There are also no penalties for fouling your opponent or vice versa. Anything goes in NBA Jam. You can even have your players do superpower shit such as jumping impossibly high and having the ball catch on fire. This is one of the key things that make this game so great. When it comes to sports video games, I prefer mine to be more imaginative. I have nothing against realistic sports games, but I'm of the opinion that in order to play them, you require a good understanding of the sport. That's probably why Redneck is actually fairly decent at a few realistic sports games. Anyway, like Kirby's Dreamland, NBA Jam can virtually be played by everyone. The big reason for that has to do with the control scheme. I'm playing the Sega CD version, but the controls are practically the same across the board with every other release. The A button shoots the ball and blocks, the B button is your turbo, and the C button is for passing and stealing. These simple controls make this an easy game to pick and play. Also as a bonus, you can customize the controls to your liking. You watchers know as well as I, controls can make or break a game. Case in point, at least for me, the original Dead Rising. Redneck likes it, but I never could get into it because of its wonky controls. The difficulty of NBA Jam is yet another thing that makes it practically for anyone. The difficulty of this game is very balanced. It has the really easy setting for beginners. In that setting, the AI mostly wanders around the court and provides little problem for you but enough of a challenge to keep you busy. There's also the insanely high difficulty mode. I only recommend that mode to players who are gaming gods with skills beyond that of a normal gamer, because the game will royally kick your ass otherwise. With as much kudos as I am giving NBA Jam, it's not perfect. It almost is, but it has a few negative aspects. For instance, there's not that much music in the game. There are a few and they're good, but I would've liked if there were more. Another nagging issue NBA Jam has is that the Lakers and the Bulls are a bit overpowered. I don't mean that as in those teams are difficult to play against, I mean that as in playing them makes the game a cakewalk. I probably should also mention this because Redneck would, the graphics are good but they could have been a little better. That's for every version by the way. 
not just the console versions. NBA Jam's crowning achievement would absolutely have to be its replay value. Neither I nor Redneck say this enough, but what really makes a game good is its replay value, and NBA Jam has that in strides. Again, going back to its ease of play, NBA Jam is one of those titles that can be played by those as young as 5 to as old as senior citizen. It's along the same lines as say Wii Sports but older, and in my personal opinion, more fun. This is especially true if you're playing with another person. That's where the real fun begins. Occasionally, Redneck and A will play against each other for hours. I'm better than he is at NBA Jam, so I'm typically the one who wins most matches. Well I believe I've talked enough about NBA Jam, so here are my final thoughts. While it's not my number one favorite sports game, it's totally ranked quite high in my top 10. I love NBA Jam. It's easy to play, yet it offers difficult challenges for the more experienced gamers. It has every team in the NBA, plus some of the best athletes that ever played in that organization. It may not have as much music as it should, and the Lakers and the Bulls have balance issues, but it's a solid game worth putting in your collection. In fact, if you are a collector, you can find NBA Jam on quite a few systems. There's the Genesis and Super Nintendo versions naturally, but you can also find NBA Jam on the Sega CD, 32X, Saturn, PlayStation 1, Atari Jaguar, and the PC. There's also that arcade one-up cabinet that comes with NBA Jam sequel, NBA Hangtime. The only ports of the game that I suggest that you guys stay away from are the Game Boy and Game Gear ports. Those aren't even worth the plastic that they're encased in. Anyway, I give NBA Jam 4 and a half bones out of 5. It's an awesome game. Well, fancy seeing you watchers at the end here. If you guys liked my short review, I'd appreciate it if you could hit that like button and leave me a comment to tell me how I did. Also, if you have some more spare time, maybe check out these other videos from Rebel Railroad Productions.